Welcome to Clark and Convo, episode two. We actually have a topic for today. Believe it or not, for those of you who are new to the show, this is sort of a discussional type of podcast that, along with your typical interesting furry news and furry related events, we go into some more meaningful stuff, kind of. And on the occasional occasion, we may go in and just talk about some furry stuff. Bad theater mood. And... And there goes my train of thought. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, so yeah, I just recently had to reformat my computer's hard drive and that messed everything up. I had to set everything up all over again, so yeah, that's a pain in the ass. But... I digress. As I start playing some Tier and Psalm in the background. Nice and soothing. Orchestral metal. But, uh. Anyway, for those who are new, as, uh. Try to get my mind back on track of wherever I was going with whatever I was saying before that I was interrupted. Anyway. Uh, so yes, we go into more of the deeper subjects of uh, you know what it means to be furry, along with the occasional promotion of interesting stuff. So, and it is a call-in type of show, which means you probably be on the show anytime. Just simply call in and be on the show, be a guest. Um, so, yeah, episode one aired last week, and it, I'd say it was fairly successful. It wasn't really the, it wasn't, that uh, one moment, and we've got actually who have a guest calling in. Hello, introduce yourself. Hello, caller. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Uh, my name's Jody. Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, what's happened? Um, today is actually my birthday, so I got myself off work and well, just sitting birthday. around lounging at home. Uh, that's, that's the way to celebrate. <laughs> yep, sit home, drink. Oh, yeah. So... I just closed my train of thought again. So, uh, <coughs> do you have, uh, anything you want to talk about right off the bat? Um, I'll just, I'll just explain my persona first, just so people get a idea of what kind of person I am. Alright. Um, before I actually became a furry, my favorite animal was wolves, They're, and they still are. However, I chose a coyote, and there's actually a funny story behind that, um, but I chose Coyote, and it's got some personal meaning behind it. And I have a second persona, which is a bat. Cool. I usually go around. I my friends just call me Yodi, which is the name of my first persona, the Coyote, Yodi Coyote. Cool. And that's about the name I use most of the time on the internet. Awesome. So. uh... Yeah, as for, as for me, um, my persona is a cheetah-jaguar hybrid. I, originally, I was just a king cheetah, but then I threw in some jaguar because 
badass. Why not? Um, yeah, I guess it all kind of, it kind of just got started in the fandom. Well, probably, no, it was back before high school, back in, I don't know, elementary, back when I was 15, when I, it's when I was first heard about this whole thing called furry. Uh, but I really didn't get engaged in the fandom till, uh, till like, uh, until I was like 17. Yeah, I first time I heard about the the furry fandom was a little over a year ago. Um, right before I turned 19, I had never heard about them before, and I had absolutely no qualms with joining them. So I just got sucked straight into them. Oh yeah. And though I didn't become active with them till about six months after joining. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that seems to be the a pretty common uh, entrance to the fandom, at least from uh, most of most of uh, the people I've talked to. Yeah, my my original um, experience was just accidentally finding a video of telephone on YouTube. I was actually searching up how to fix my Android phone. It had this little crazy screen on it. So I searched it up on YouTube and I found telephone by accident. Huh. And I just started researching from there, found Fur Affinity, a couple other sites, and just kind of rolled through there. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, uh, getting back on track, I kind of, kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, Sorry. That's all right. I. I haven't been doing this very long. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've called in on a live stream, though. I'm not sure how exactly it goes. Yeah. Oh, we just kind of wing it here on this show. But, uh, yeah, usually we start for a little bit of a banter. Uh, just kind of, you know, see what, talk about what's going on, and interesting stuff, and life, that kind of thing. And then we go into a little bit of if we got any news or events. And I do have an event to talk about today. Uh, it's a fur meet in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Saturday, October 25th, 6 to 9 p.m. at Felix and Oscars in Des Moines, in uh, Urbandale, Iowa. Um, uh, uh, the uh, Central Wire Fur Meat Group uh, is on Facebook. Uh, as I have the link in the chat right now. It's a uh, Crap, I don't know why I keep losing my train of thought. I, my brain is like in five different places at once. Is this like the first year that they're doing that meet, or has it been around for a while? Uh, well, this particular one has been around for probably six, six months or so. Yeah, it started like in the fall of last year. And it's been going every other month since then. So, so it happens quite often. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's really been growing fairly rapidly. Uh, so, yeah, that's that pretty much does it for the uh, event. And for everyone else who's watching, if you've got an event you want to talk about, uh, be sure to send it in to the show, clausenconvo.strikepod.com. I know they've got that uh, furlough wing coming up next week in Orlando. Oh, yeah.
Uh, let's see, Orlando. I'll look that up real quick. How do you spell that? Uh, I'm putting a link right here in the description right there. Uh, sorry, I was put in the live stream, live stream uh, chat. I got uh, for Halloween 2014, Orlando's furriest annual Halloween themed rocking until the morning dance party. All right. It looks like it's just an overnight kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, October 18th. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Orlando Elks Lodge. $30 to get in. Anything else you want to talk about? Can't really think of anything right now. Um, what what do you normally have on your channel? Oh, yeah, we just I just just been starting up right now. Uh, originally, the show aired on UStream uh, through the summer of last year, and then it had a. There, I had a co-host, Dante Padfoot. Uh, uh, the show was basically uh, streamed out of his apartment over in Atomwa, and uh, and it, you know, really, he came up with a lot of the ideas for the show, and and me, I'm just, I'm just the guy who likes to push buttons. Um, I'm just mainly this is the producer and I've been trying to find uh I've been looking for co-hosts to uh, take over go away I've asked I don't need you um yeah I've been thinking of opening up a little stream thing in a couple of weeks I've already set up that's how I found your stream originally was setting up my stream here on first stream today oh yeah yeah we yeah we Used to used to use Ustream, but it does a pain in the ass, and it's there's too many restrictions on that. And then uh, just recently, we found uh, I found First Stream, and and it it's just so much better. And uh, then then I got the Open Broadcaster software to for my uh, capture uh, software and. Uh, that's been it was real nice. Yeah, I, I found first stream. Uh, I actually started out wanting to try out live stream, and I got a hold of Fur Media, who are also here on first stream, and they gave me some tips around there how to start out, and directed me back to this website. Uh, yeah, Fur Media, another very good show. Yeah, I try to watch them whenever I can. Yeah. I didn't catch your name earlier. Well, uh, what do I call you? Striker. Striker. Striker Chiguar. Yeah. 
So you say uh, you just like pushing those buns around there. How long you been uh, working as a producer style? Uh, since last year, about this time. Did you do anything, any work with any other people before you started this show up last year? No, but it's just pretty much just been me. And, uh, yeah, if you want to check out some of the archives, you can check those out on the uh, Strike Boss Studios YouTube channel. You said Strike Box Studios? I'll, I'll link it in the... In the, uh... Strike Boss Studios. If my windows will cooperate. Alright, this should be it. Linking in the chat right now. So you, uh, you just started up this was a uh, second season last week um, yeah more or less uh, I originally wanted to start it sooner but yeah things weren't really working out and uh, I just ended up rebooting the whole second season what prompted you just start it up uh, just uh, to as in to restart it yep uh, yeah, I just wasn't really happy with the with the uh, way that it was going at the time, and yeah, yeah, I just had better ideas. Yeah. So, uh, tell tell me what uh, kind of stream you're planning to do. For the most part, um, I have no experience with any kind of live streaming or any kind of radio skills. My current college is all about computers. However, the work I'm at, I've been complimented constantly on the voice I use, per se. And I've decided that, okay, I'm just going to give it a try. I start out, just go online, check it out. And to start out, I just want to try out some just news, up and coming fur meets and such. And just as I get more confidence and more experience in there, I decided I wanted to branch out afterwards. All right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, in a sense, it's sort of what I, what I wanted to do. Uh, in addition to. Uh, uh, going into a little more of a deeper subject, as I said in the beginning, uh, the deeper parts of you know the furry fandom, what it means, you know what it means to be furry, and you know, the the uh, how it coincides with society and sort of the uh, more philosophical angles. Kind of like the meanings behind the animals you choose and such. Yeah. Yeah, I know I've uh, talked to some people. I had this uh, three-day beach blast here back in uh, early summer, and I'm that was actually my first big me. And I met a couple couple of people who had some really interesting pasts compared to the personas that they used. Hmm. As for myself, like I said, my persona was a coyote. Um, mainly, whenever I created him, I was kind of in a low point in my life. So, 
I, I modeled him after Wile E. Coyote, which it, it, it's kind of funny because the reason I chose him was that he tries so hard to get what he wants. He's always going after that Roadrunner, and he never seems to get him. And at that point in my life, whenever I created him, it that's what my life felt like. I was trying to reach everything I was trying to go for, and I just had I just couldn't get there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was actually, I had real similar uh, uh, incentive for, you know, being che a cheetah, because, you know, as they say, cheetahs never prosper, but uh, they're stubborn as hell, so. I can imagine. Yeah, but uh, and then at uh, some point later, I ended up, Creating a second character, uh, which is a uh, a war cat, uh, what I call a war cat. Uh, Hope you can see it on the camera here. But, uh, yeah. Nice. I was. He kind of came along when I was at sort of a low point. I got tired, jaded, maybe a bit angry, but, uh... I know how that feels. When I first entered the, first entered the fandom, I had moved away when I was 17, and I'd been living away for about two years, and I found the fandom while I was living in a friend, a uh, co-worker's house, and it, it turned into a release, a an outlet for everything that was happening and being at the time I was underage I was underpaid and couldn't really tell anybody because I was just too young I couldn't really get out there and find a place to live if not to stay underpaid yeah. and if I went and found a proper job they wouldn't give me more than 20 hours a week yeah that's it's a place to be it's a place to belong no, it, yeah, I've, I kind of like to think of, uh, you know, think of it as a uh, second home almost. Very much so. I, I thank the fandom a lot for what they helped me through, and I everything's looking up for me now after going through what I did. Yeah, definitely. If it weren't for the fandom, you know, I would. I don't even know what I'd end up doing. I would I would be lost. I would have no idea where to go, where to walk, nothing. I wouldn't know what to do at all without the fandom. Yeah, I'd, there would be a slim chance that I may end up in jail or or something like that. Yeah, it it would probably happen to a lot of people if they hadn't found the fandom. Oh yeah, just the people in the fandom. They're so accepting, so. Well, friendly, really. Yeah. Now, not to say that all of them are friendly. I've met a couple of grumpy people. Oh yeah, yeah. They're at, they're there's assholes everywhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think about I uh, often you know think back to uh, the first time I went to Midwest Fur Fest, which is my uh, first convention back in. 2013 and uh, you know that you know that moment when they were at the uh, closing ceremonies uh, where they had their charity up on stage they were going over the numbers that you know, that kind of and it didn't really sink in until uh, until I was on my way home and you know PCD sets in and I really haven't had much experience with the larger meet. My first convention I'm planning is for Furry Fiesta down in Dallas. I don't know. So, um, 
You said that was a charity at the end of the convention. Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they uh, uh, the uh, charity for that, for, uh, for that year was uh, a small animal shelter just north of Chicago. And uh, I can't remember what the final number, what the uh, what they ended up raising, but uh, it was I think it was like in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it was, it just completely, you know, changed my perspective on humanity. Gave you hope. Yeah. I see those all the time. Hope for humanity restored. I kind of forgot what I was what I was wanting to talk about next. Can't can't really recall it. Welcome to the trials and tribulations of live broadcast. Yes. I probably should have thought of, like, wrote down what I wanted to talk about before I called in. Yeah, I, I keep thinking I should probably take some sort of notes. And just Even if it's just subject lines. Yeah. But then I'm... Then I remember I'm lazy. Aren't we all? Yes, indeed. Yeah. And caffeinated. Caffeinated, yes. Good thing to be. Caffeine and beer don't go too well together for me. <laughs> Was yeah. that a monster there? Yep. Yeah. Monster import. Haven't tried one of those. Not the only monsters I drink from Java's. Yeah, this is pretty good. As for any other kind of energy drink, I just stick with Red Bull. Uh, I, I'm I'm an ADHD kind of. Just ADHD got me, so caffeine yeah. doesn't really work too well on me. So. Being caffeinated doesn't help much. It'll, it'll actually put me to sleep. Yeah, it, you know, I'm kind of the same way, yet sort of in the opposite way. It, it kind of evens me out. Well, I need something to even me out, especially at work. I, I'm just so energetic yeah. at work. I just... I, I annoy a lot of people with my voice mannerisms and such. Well, speaking of, that's uh, back to my coyote. I said that I had a story behind how he became a coyote. Yes. It was, um, it was a misunderstanding. There's this, like, this little seven- or eight-year-old little girl, and I had this laugh I do. And it's this really high-pitched, really crazy, maniacal laugh that I just like to do, and people always laugh at it. And that little girl, she was thinking of hyena, but she, she called me a coyote. I was like, I, I didn't want to correct her. She just had so much conviction in calling me a coyote. I just stuck with it. So instead of choosing a hyena, they, they took me a coyote. Hmm. Which I'm planning on getting that laugh on on recording here sometime this next week. It, I tried it on the microphone I'm using right now, and it didn't work out too well. It was too, too much distortion on it. Uh, it's, uh, what kind of microphone are you using? Just a Turtle Beach headset. Ah. I got it for 15 bucks at a place called Big Lots, refurbished. Hmm. Actually, sounds pretty good. I got uh, someone's at the door. I don't know who. Yeah, I heard that. All right, I'll be right back. The one time, well, the one opportunity to buy Girl Scout cookies and I'm broke. <laughs> the town I live in is way too small. I've never seen a Girl Scout. Yeah, this is. That was about. That was actually the first time I've answered the door to a Girl Scout. <laughs> I 
Yeah, the town I live in, it's one of those really small towns. You blink, you miss it. Graduating class was only 42 people. Yeah, Bloomfield's kind of the same way. And I actually grew up in Centerville, which is... Which is Centerville is a small town, but it, even Centerville makes Bloomfield look superfluous, rather insignificant. What state's uh, Centerville in? Iowa. Iowa? Oh yeah, you pulled up that uh, news earlier on the Iowa fur meat. Fur yeah. meat. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Bloomfield's like just one county over. Yeah, if there were to be a town smaller than what I have, uh, before I came to this little town called Iola, Iola with an L, a lot of people think I come from Iowa when I tell them where I live. But um, it's a tiny town about five minutes over. There's only three houses and a church, and they call it Cross. Ah. Smallest, town, smallest town I've ever seen. Yeah, I've, I've been through a few towns about that size. Actually, grew up just outside of uh, just outside of one. Yeah, one of the great things about small towns, you can go wherever you want and go fishing. You don't need a license, no nothing. <laughs> Game warden don't mess with you in the back roads. Yeah, yeah we got this uh, road. Takes me out twenty minutes to get there. We call it Old Democrat. Uh, the road's only big. We can go at a time. We get and it's got seven bridges. Even though each bridge is only about 20 feet long, it's got two planks. That's what the bridges are. All of them. Two planks. <laughs> only one vehicle over at a time. But yeah, they've got rivers running through all around where I live. So I get to go fishing all the time. Nice. So you plan on going to any meets? Uh, not meets, uh, conventions in this next year, 2015 oh, year. I was hoping to do a Midwest Fur Fest again, but you know it's looking like I might not be able to find a ride or find a room. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm currently looking for rooms for Furry Fiesta right now. I might have one. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I'd, when you, I'd, you know, last year I drove my I uh, drove myself and uh, and that was with completely shot ball joints and wheel bearings yeah I got that which I got fixed but now I got bolding my tires are bald in the back yeah I drive an old uh, what is it 89 Nissan uh -huh. little Nissan pickup and first thing I did when I got got the truck I actually paid 1600 for it which was a little expensive being that it's got 298,000 miles on it but uh, first thing I did was replace all my tires, <laughs> yeah. and then I had to have my transmission rebuilt because the guy I bought it from had no transmission fluid in it whatsoever, burned up the gears. Brilliant! <laughs> yeah, I know, and then it, I, I was unfortunate because right after I replaced the transmission, uh, the job I was working at, which I was a head cook at a restaurant, uh, the restaurant closed down. They ran out of money. So I lost my income right after I spent well over around $1,200 to rebuild a transmission. So I went unemployed for a little while. Yeah, yeah I, I drive a, a 98 Ford Ranger. And uh, I've had to replace a water pump like three different times. And uh, turns out there's a there's a bolt rattling around in the water jacket, knocking the impeller loose. How'd that happen? I <laughs> no no one knows. Now the the uh, the previous owner uh, rebuilt the top end on it, and uh, at some point. Someone must have lost a bolt and it was just hiding in there, waiting to ruin my day. My first vehicle was a 89 Nissan Sentra. Now, I also had a, Honda, a 89 Honda, no, sorry, it was an 87 Nissan Sentra. 
And my second vehicle was a 89 Honda Accord. And both the Sentra and the Accord were both stick shifts. However, the Sentra, it was, um, none of the gauges worked. No speedometer, tachometer, gas gauge, water, all that. None of it worked. I had a five-speed stick shift. Fifth gear is missing. I, if I had to guess, I couldn't get over 50 miles an hour ah. at all. Now, to say that it was Jimmy rigged was an understatement. It was originally my mom's car, and the fuel lodge was held up with zip ties. Our the carburetor, mm-hmm. the top of it was a pan, a kitchen pan, and the gas tank, the the gauge that measured the fuel level was a wine cork. It, it, it was horrible. Uh, it, it was the, the car was had horrible performance. I couldn't like if I let go of the gas or went into neutral, pressed in the clutch. If I lost any kind of power whatsoever, the engine died. So I got used to popping the clutch while going around the corners, going anywhere between 20 and 40 miles an hour. I would have to pop the clutch every time I turned a corner or hit the brakes. Uh, it, it was horrible. I, I eventually blew a head gasket on it after a uh, water hose blew. I had stopped. It was about 11 o'clock, and I went to the track to go run. And apparently the hose blew right before I got to the track, and I didn't realize it was leaking water, or all the water had already leaked by the time I had parked the car. So I come back about midnight, and I go driving home, and before I even leave the parking lot, I just hear this loud cracking sound, and then smoke just seeps out from under my hood. Uh-huh. It, it was, it was, it was bad. The car lasted a while. I think I had about four hundred thousand miles on it. Yeah, <laughs> which is one of the reasons it's so Jimmy rigged. <laughs> yeah, my first car was uh, '89 Dodge Omni. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a fun little car. Uh, blew the engine on a gravel road in the middle of nowhere. Um, then then a Wound up with a a uh, a reliant, and uh, as soon as I killed that one, uh, I ended up uh, getting uh, something I actually wanted, uh, which was uh, an '89 Ranger, uh, 4.0 liter four-wheel drive. Which yeah, I love that one, and I can't. I wish I could have you know fixed that one up and uh, kept that one going but it was just you know just too old and the years were too much for it and I had to sell it and it was actually the first vehicle that I owned that I didn't kill <laughs> <laughs> yeah this truck is only my third vehicle I killed the other two yeah. both of them had gaskets oh yeah 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 anyway after I s- sold that one I I Drove my mom's uh, little '93 uh, Ranger, which had a it's a four banger and a manual transmission. Um, it was it's just basically just nothing but no nothing was automatic. You know, there's no air. Just it was just a truck, and uh, and that, I kind of liked that. Yeah, that was pretty much what my Nissan was like. No power steering, no power brakes, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, but it, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was, you know, it was efficient. It was pretty fun to drive, and uh, I could actually uh, take a. It actually, took a beating, uh, but uh, then, then I finally got around to uh, buying the Ranger I have now, which, uh, which is a. 4.0 four-wheel drive XLT uh, flare side, and uh, it's and yeah, I probably won't ever sell it if I can ever help it. But if I do end up having to sell it, or uh, then uh, I'll probably end up looking for a man something with a manual in it. If I do end up getting another vehicle. 
Yeah, I really wish I had a stick shift in my truck. It's the only vehicle I've owned that wasn't not uh, manual, but I was I didn't have the luxury of searching for another vehicle. I needed one then and there, so I just ended up buying it. Yeah. It, though it's a good truck. Overdrive doesn't always work. I've got a it's got a button on the shifter handle on the steering column, and I've got to use electrical tape to keep the button down. Mm. I just broke my windshield wiper stick thingy. So I wired in a little toggle switch from my fuse so I could turn my windshield wipers on and off. But other than that, it's a small truck. Uh, The stock rating is three quarter tons for a pull weight. But the guy I bought it from, even though he didn't take good care of the transmission, he made sure that he had a good engine. It was a uh, 4.1 liter which really surprised me when I found out because the truck's so small, but 4.1 liter and it pulls after the, he put that new engine in it, pulled a one and a quarter tons, I think. Hmm. But the truck itself only weighs about two and a half tons, three tons. Yeah, I think, yeah, my, my truck weighs about, uh, I drove mine onto a scales once and it, came out uh, weighing 4,000 pounds and so, it, uh, so your truck's a little bit lighter than mine yeah. and, but uh, I, I'm telling you my truck is small I, I, I wouldn't expect the weight I got off of it Yeah. but other than that I get really good performance off of it um, I did a little tweaking I had to replace a couple of parts EGR valve my, and just a uh, just a couple of things and now I get about 35 40 miles to the gallon off of it now yeah, that's actually pretty good I I probably get about oh I don't know 20 uh, but uh, then again it's got it's got pretty low gearing it's got that 375 in the differentials no yeah. yeah my truck's not made for racing it's made for pulling yeah So what you got here sitting on the screen? Uh, this little furry comic you got? Yeah. Nah, he can't deny it. He's a furry. Hey, he's a coyote. <laughs> ah, yes, he's a coyote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that seems rather fitting for this particular episode. Yes, long live the coyotes. We will always win. Well, hmm. I don't think it's going to work out. We don't always win. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Fine. Uh, Say that again. I have actual pictures of my truck here. You said it only weighs two four thousand pounds. Yeah. Your truck's bigger than mine. Yeah. No, it's cleaner too. Much cleaner than mine. My, mine's kind of dirty. I got a leaky pan gasket that I'm going to be replacing here soon. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, it's got some, a few aftermarket stuff on it that uh, previous owner put in, including this Rockford Fosgate uh, system. Yeah, mo- most everything on my truck's aftermarket. It's a Z24. It took. The I had to replace my alternator a couple weeks ago, and AutoZone took nearly an hour to find an alternator that would work with my truck, because they just didn't. They, even with the the VIN number and models and everything, they couldn't find an alternator that would fit with the plugs it had. 
Mm. So, good job, Aftermarket. You made me buy an alternator that cost me three times as much as what the stock alternator would have cost. <laughs> I think I spent about 400 on the alternator. It was horrible. Yeah. I, I really didn't want to spend that much money on it. It put me back for a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, f replacing the ball joint on this cost me about, uh, the ball joints and the wheel bearings it was about, uh, 1600. Ouch. I'm, I'm still, I've still got like 200 left to pay off on it. Yeah, I just, I bought mine right, uh, right out. Took most of my savings. Yeah. But I owned it right off the bat. I just realized we got way off topic, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Not that that's saw, a bad thing. Oh. Say that again? Not that it's a bad thing. Nah, it's just some little ramblings here yeah. and there. Yeah, it got a full dead air somehow. Oh, yeah. So, what do you take of the F.A. being down? Wait, F.A.'s down? No! Yeah, they had a DDoS <laughs> attack. They've been down for, like, since, uh... Yeah. Wednesday, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I think it was about Wednesday when it went, when it went down. Yeah, um, I found this really funny... Dramat uh, dramatization. I, I don't even know how to say that right. Let's see, from uh, somebody off Twitter. And he was just throwing a fit, jumping all over his room, throwing <laughs> pillows all over the place. It was a real funny video he put up. Yep, yeah, still down. Yeah, it seemed, uh, I think they've managed to switch over their um, servers. Uh, the guy who, at the admin for FA has actually put up a um, fund me. Dragon here. Yeah. Yep. And he put up a fund me, and I literally, when I first looked at it, it was sixty dollars, and he had just started posting it, and I literally, right before my eyes, watched it go up to over three hundred dollars. Oh. And let's see. Let me go find it real quick and see how how far they've gotten so far. And speaking of funding, whoo! This morning was sixty dollars. It is now at six thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> they won FA back, and he actually said that he'll be uh, donating that uh, as an incentive. He'll be donating a portion of the proceeds to So Furry. Huh. Never Which get I'll, never get I'll, between I'll, a furry and his porn. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's what's Tumblr for. All right, I just threw the link to the fundraiser over in the description. Six thousand nine hundred thirty. Hundred thirty-nine people in three days. I was person number six, and that was only like two hours ago. I was number six. It's now at 139 people. Wow. Let's see. We got a Mr. Chris Hughes paid out a hundred dollars. Got a Royal Saber paid out fifty. <clears throat> we got a Jerry Yin with two hundred and fifty dollars. His comment: I like stickers. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like they're doing pretty good. And he's, uh, let's see, what is he thinking? Let's see what he's been posting. Okay, his recent post here about five minutes ago, it says, okay, okay, we're no longer calling it DDoS. The term is now cooties. 
F.A. has the cooties. So Furry has the cooties. <laughs> uh, Weasley has the blank. <laughs> yeah, it seems like this DDoS hit all the Furry websites at a relatively the same day or after. Yeah. And F.A. seems to be the only one that's still down, I think. Yeah. Let's see. It looks like Weasel made it out okay. Uh, Weasley, uh, or Weasel, made, uh, they went down for like a, an hour and then they immediately put over Cloudflare and they came back up almost immediately. Uh, Ink Bunny's down, E621's down. And, yeah, I, knew, I fairly knew the furry networking site, uh, Furgather, is Fur down. Gather's down? I looked at that yesterday. Yeah. Wow, these people are persistent. <laughs> Why do they gotta hate on the fairies? <laughs> We're just a big, cuddly <laughs> ball of madness. We're just fluffy. They do. They know not the terrors they have unleashed. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Wow. Yeesh. So yeah, it looks like their fundraiser is going out pretty good. I don't think it'll be too long before he'll be able to get new servers with a different company and all that. Um, I believe he said he had like three different facilities and they attacked all of them. Wow. Took all three FA facilities down. Huh. Huh. That's something. So, yeah, here's a fun fact. FA is one of the top 10,000 sites visited globally. Woo! Yeah, that's a lot. So tell me, what, what's your uh, favorite fursuiters? Do you have any? Um. 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 Um, try to think off the top of my head. Um, uh, uh def definitely, uh, definitely telephone's one of them. She's one of everybody's. Yeah. I've been on a telephone watching spree lately. I watched yeah. her uh, 2014 dance competition. Uh, apparently, uh, she didn't plan on actually dancing. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure which convention it was. But uh, she found this little girl that... Um, Michaela, I think she was called. And Michaela came up to the telephone and asked if she was going to be in the dance competition. Aww. And she just couldn't have herself just say no to this little girl. So she decided to go in. Uh, have you seen that video? Um, I don't think I have. Yeah, it, it wasn't one of her normal dances. Um, she just kind of went on as like an extra act for the dance. But what she did was she asked the mother to bring Michaela to the competition. And right before she goes out, she t brings up these signs and says, I would like to dedicate this dance to Michaela. And actually brings Michaela upstage and dances with her in, in, uh, for the competition. Aww. It, it was really cute. But uh, other than telephone, I think my favorites would be Snapback, Masaru, and Tear. Uh, I'm get I'm getting uh, kind of fond of uh, Mother Haas as well. Hmm. I follow all kinds on YouTube. You can't yeah. get in There's no end to them. Um. Trying to trying to think of his name. I. Uh... He, he, he's a, he's, um, his, his suit's a Smilodon, uh, Spoticus. Spoticus Cheetah? Uh, yeah. I haven't seen too many videos of him, but I, I've seen a lot of his posts on Twitter and such. 
Which I think I just... I think he followed me earlier today. I think... Or was that somebody else? I, I know I've been following Spotticus for a while, though. Let's see... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play in one of his videos. Uh, uh, Shadow Cat followed me uh, earlier today, and then last week I had October Dog. He's one of the staff on Furry Fiesta. <laughs> yeah, I eat the butter. Most likely emotional trauma. PTSD. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's Spartacus. All right, I'm, I'm gonna have to find him. I don't know if I'm following him on YouTube yet. Yeah, I linked him in the uh, chat. Maha. Uh -huh. Spotticus Cheetah, now subscribed. And, uh, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, they're enjoying the show so far. Uh, be sure to uh, check out the Patreon. What is Patreon? I don't think I've ever been on there. It's it's basically a way of uh, it's basically like crowdfunding. Yeah. And you can set up to uh, you know like you know pay out every episode or every month. And it, it actually seems like a pretty good system. You already got yourself any Patreons? Uh, not yet. Yeah, I'm, I went to that GoFundMe thing that um, Dragonair is using, and I decided I was going to start one. Try to see if I can raise up enough money to commission myself a fursuit before Furry Fiesta. Yeah. Which, uh, you have a fursuit? Um, I've got one commissioned how long has it been commissioned uh, it's uh actually sh it's been uh, a few months now it's it's about it's nearing completion uh let's see if I can... who'd you commission it from uh dark paw yeah um I was planning on commissioning mine from, uh, let's see, who was it? La 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 la, who am I? Athcor, the, dra the dragon. Ah. At least I think. Uh, I've got it bookmarked somewhere. No, uh, Luna, Luno Volps. Hmm. Or Volpes. Luno Volpes. Ah, it's on Fur Affinity. I can't look at my commissioner. I want a commission. So, you got any plans for the for the uh, next week live stream? Um, nothing yet. Ah, you got follow me eyes. This your this your first suit head? Yep. Yeah, I'm actually still in the process of detailing my Yodi. Hmm. 
Um, I, he's got a basic layout already. His hair, eyes, such. Certain physical birthmarks. But I'm still detailing some of his color markings on his uh, front side, his chest and such. Which I've got to find somebody to go ahead and draw for me. Which I'll be working on that here in the next couple weeks. Hmm. It'd be awesome to actually... I, I actually paid somebody when I, were, I went to the Furry Beach Blast. I paid this girl for to draw to help me create the reference sheet never got it mm. uh, I'd already paid her and all that yeah 20 bucks down the drain it wasn't fun that sucks yeah so I, I can try drawing on myself but my skill it's off and on I have some good stuff I've got some bad stuff uh, I've got more bad stuff than I've got good stuff. <laughs> yeah. But when I do have some good stuff, I really like it. And I it, it helps that I have a... Um, I have a brother-in-law who's a tattoo artist, and he has no problem giving me free criticism whenever I want it. Hmm. Let's see. Oops, what am I doing? There we go. Haha. -ha. Trying to find a link to one of my old drawings. You ever read the Dreamkeepers comic? Um I don't think I have. I've heard of it. A really good comic. Um one of the main characters, Nama, uh, I draw her a lot. Yeah. I, I love the character, and I love the character style that um, that they use. Dave and Liz Lily. Which well, their house burnt down a couple months ago, and mm -hmm. they put up a fundraiser to help get them a new home. Yeah. So it's come out to six o'clock. I think it's about time for us to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, it, it was yeah. fun being on here with you. Um, what's today? Friday. You do this every Friday? Yep. All right. I'll try to get back on Friday. I'll see if I can pull some people in with me as well. That sounds good. Yeah, thanks, All right. Thanks for calling in. No problem. It was Striker Chegwar, right? Yep. Striker Chegwar. Uh, Chegwar. All right. Well, you have a good night. Have a good week. Have fun. Yeah, you too. See ya. See you later. Yeah, that was Yoke. Calling in the guest. Young Claus and Convo. Derail a little bit, but that's... It's a good kind of derailment. And, uh... Yeah, it sounds like he's going to be calling in next week. So, until then. Get my outro music up. Let's play this one. Uh, until next week. Now keep sending in your news, your events, and any ideas for topics. And uh, we'll get to them next week. Same time, same place. Five o'clock Central Time. It's Friday. I right hear on first stream. Rock hard, live free, keep it true. I'll see ya.